and welcome back to my garage. I'm Jeremy and today we're going to wire up a couple of power window motors. So let's get started. As always, there's a ton of different ways to wire things. And on the left side, we have a circuit without relays. And on the right side, we have a circuit with relays. Now, depending on how many power window motors your car has, or if you're building a race car or a regular car or a scary theme park ride, that will determine which kind of circuit you want to go with. So it's really up to you to decide what's best for your scenario. On the left side, we have a circuit and the switch has six pins on it. So let's take a close up. This is a momentary switch, which means if you push it in one direction, it flicks back to the center. If you go in the other direction, it flicks back to the center. It works just like every window switch you've ever used in your whole life. Now on the bottom side, there's six pins, which seems pretty scary, but if you just hide three of them, it becomes a whole lot simpler. Now imagine you have power coming into this middle pin, and then you flick the switch in one direction. The switch is taking that power from the center and sending it out this pin. And then if you flick it the other way, it's taking the power from the center and sending it out this pin. And now you have twice as many. So it's basically just having two switches in one and they both do exactly the same. Three are for one side of the switch, three are for the other side of the switch. And one switch is just controlling two circuits. It's actually quite easy. Now we obviously have a couple of power window motors here. I believe these ones are actually for a Ford truck, if I recall correctly. They are made by Dorman and they are part number 742-250. When they are being used, they allegedly draw up to 13 amps at their maximum load. So you will need a circuit that can handle up to 13 amps per window motor. Now, what does that actually mean? That means that all of the wiring in this circuit and the switch and the fuse all needs to be rated at at least 13 amps. Ideally, you actually want to have a rating of higher than that. So the switch here is actually rated at 16 amps. The fuse here is rated at 15 amps. And then the wiring is able to handle at least 13 amps as well. If we were to put a 10 amp fuse in here or use a 10 amp switch, you'd burn out the switch or you'd burn out the fuse when you powered up your window motor. And that's one of the downsides of having a circuit without relays in it you need to use a switch that's rated at at least the amperage that you're drawing through the window motor. So now imagine you have two window motors that go through one switch. Now you need a switch that can handle 26 amps and you need to have wiring that can handle 26 amps and a fuse that's at least 26 amps. That's a lot of amperage to be going through one switch or one fuse. And usually the bigger the amperage rating on the switches, the uglier the switches are. So if you're building a really awesome race car with a totally custom dash and you want it to look a specific way, you're going to have way more switch options with the relay side of the circuit. But we'll get into that in a minute. We have power coming up here through the fuse, which again is a 15 amp fuse in this scenario because it's only powering one window motor. The power then comes up here and goes to one of the center posts in this switch. Now on the opposite side of the center of the switch, so if we were to go like this, there's a ground hooked up to this pin right here. That's the black wire, which comes down here and goes to ground. So this is your power and this is your ground. And they go to each side of the center of the switch. Now the wires coming off of the window motor, the red and the black here, they go to the two front posts here, which if you have the, the uh, switch right here, it'll be this one and this one. And it doesn't actually matter which one you put it on as long as red is on one and black is on the other but you can swap them either way. It doesn't actually matter. Now for the other wires, the yellow and the blue, I'll actually show you a quick close up, and you'll see that the blue wire is tapped into the black wire that goes to the window motor, and then it jumps to the opposite corner of the switch. And then the yellow wire connects to the red wire of the window motor, and it also jumps to the opposite corner of the switch. Now to actually make the motor go in two different directions, we need to reverse the polarity on the motor. So red becomes black and black becomes red. You basically make one a positive and one a negative and then you swap them to make it go the opposite direction. That's exactly what this switch is doing. Let's follow the electricity. Now power comes up here through the fuse to the center of the switch. And then when you move the switch upward, it takes this power and the ground in the center of the bottom and it feeds them to these two terminals. So that means the power goes to the yellow which is also the red wire of the motor. 
And then ground on the other side goes to the blue, which is also the black wire on the motor. So we have it turning clockwise. In the opposite direction, we have power coming in and it goes to the center and we have ground on the center of the opposite side. And then if we move the switch downward, it sends power to the blue wire, which come over here and it goes to the black wire of the motor. And then the yellow wire, which jumps over and goes to the red wire of the motor. So now it's sending power to the opposite terminals as it was before, like this. And you'll see it goes counterclockwise. Now that you know how to wire up a power window motor without relays, let's come to this side and we'll wire up a power window motor with relays. You'll probably recall that this switch had to be rated at least 13 amps to manage this window motor. This switch does not. It could actually be 10 amp or 5 amp or even 3 amp and it will be totally fine controlling this power window motor because we're using relays. Now the whole purpose of a relay is to control a large amp circuit with a small amp switch. So this switch is telling the relays to turn on and off and the relays are telling the motor to turn on and off. Now this switch is actually a much simpler and cheaper switch, but it is also a momentary switch. So you can see it always pops back to the center no matter which direction you put it in, just like every other window switch on earth. On the bottom of the switch, we only have three terminals. So this is like having half of one of those where you have power coming in and when you move the switch in one direction, it takes the power from the center and it sends it out one side. And then if you let go, the power comes back to the center and doesn't go anywhere. And then if you go in the other direction, it takes the power and it sends it out the other side. We're using the same power window motor as the first circuit, but we do have two fuses and we have two five pin relays. If you're unfamiliar with five pin relays, I actually have a whole bunch of videos showing how to wire them, which I'll link down below. In this video, we're actually going to wire these relays in a little bit of a different fashion than I've shown you in the past. On the bottom of a five pin relay, you'll notice five pins and each one is numbered. So you'll see the bottom one is pin 30, the top one's 87, the left one is 86, the right one's 85, and in the center is 87A. And those numbers correspond with this note right here. So you'll see pin 30 is blue. So the blue wires are pin 30, the yellow wires are pin 87, black is 85, white is 86, and then the red is 87A. You'll also notice two fuses and they're different colors. That's because this one is five amp and this one's 15 amp. Much like this circuit, we need one part of the relay circuit to be 15 amps and able to handle the amperage draw of this motor. And that's what this blue circuit is. The opposite circuit is just protecting the switch side of the circuit. So the electricity that's going through this fuse never actually touches the window motor itself. It only goes through to the relay and to the switch. Just like the first circuit, all we're doing with these two wires is we're swapping the polarity to make it go in one direction or the other. We're just doing that with relays instead of with the switch itself. The switch is just basically saying, tell this relay to turn on or tell this relay to turn on. And they flip flop depending on which way you move the switch. Let's follow the electricity. Power comes in here on the left circuit through the orange fuse, which is the five amp fuse. And it comes up here and it goes right into both white wires. And that is pin 86 on both relays. On the opposite side of the relays are the black wires right here, which are pin 85 on each relay. And those go to each side of the switch. The switch is considered a negative trigger because we are controlling the relays on the negative side of the circuit. And that's why there's one wire in the middle of the switch, which goes to ground. So when we flip this switch, we're passing this ground wire to either this side of the circuit, this relay, or this side of the circuit, which is this relay. And by doing that, we're turning this relay on or this relay on. As you can see, that is a very low amperage circuit because the power just comes through here, goes to the relays and to the switch. It's not actually powering up the motor at all. It's a totally separate circuit. It's just telling the relays to turn on or off. Now the larger amperage circuit begins down here at your power source and it goes through this 15 amp fuse up here and it splits into these two yellow wires, which are pin 87 in each relay. So we have pin 87 here is the yellow wire and then pin 87 here is the yellow wire. 
Now that power coming in doesn't go anywhere until we flip this switch. It's just hanging out in there doing nothing. Pin 30 coming out of the relays is actually the blue wires and that is connected to the red wire of the motor and the black wire of the motor. And those are the two wires that are gonna be flipping their polarity depending on how this switch is moved. The last wires on these relays are the red ones and that's pin 87A on each one. And those come down here and they connect to a ground. And the ground comes down here and grounds right to the chassis of the vehicle or whatever you're using as a ground source. Now let's talk about what's actually happening when we flip this switch. In a five pin relay, the default position for a relay to just sit in when the power is off is connecting pin 30 to pin 87A. It does that all the time unless the relay is activated. So right now, both of these blue wires and really both wires coming from the motor are actually connected to ground because pin 30 is connected to 87A right now and that's the blue wires connecting to the red wires. So both of these are actually going through the relays and they're grounded. Now, as soon as we flip this switch, we're now telling the ground circuit right here in the middle to connect to this wire if we move this switch downward. And the ground is turning on in here, which is turning on this relay. When this relay turns on, that means the yellow wire right here is actually connecting to the blue wire right here, which is the black wire on the motor. And the red wire from the motor, which is the other blue wire on this one, is actually still defaulting to ground, and therefore the black wire is a power, the red wire is a ground. And that's making the motor spin counterclockwise. Now if we do the opposite by pushing the switch upward, we connect this ground to this ground, and it comes up here, and it activates the left relay, and it turns the red wire positive and the black wire to be negative, which then makes the motor go clockwise. Moving the switch downward is activating the right relay and doing nothing with the left, and then moving it upward is activating the left relay and doing nothing with the right. So which circuit is right for you? I don't know. It really depends what you're doing with these window motors. Or if you wanna use a really special switch that's near and dear to your heart, you might wanna use some relays. But if you don't mind a big honking switch in your dashboard and you don't care what it looks like, maybe you'll wanna go with this circuit. You just need to make sure that your switches and your wiring and your fuses are matched up to the amperage draw of whatever window motor you're using. One question that I've wondered for a long time is what happens if you grab one of these and then you flick this switch? What do you think is gonna happen? Are we gonna blow the fuse? Let's find out. Whoa, that was awesome. Should we do it to this side? Hey, why not? Uh, that was less exciting. It's pretty strong though. So it looks like it doesn't do anything if you hold it in place. Although I would imagine if you do that too much, you're gonna burn out the motor and make it weaker, or you might pop a fuse or something like that. Great news, they still work. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like and maybe even subscribe right down below. And I also have a ton more wiring videos which you will find right up here. I'm sure you're going to enjoy them. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully we'll see you on the next one.